This tutorial uh, will take into consideration uh, that the player has certain knowledge about uh, very, very basic tricks like ISG, ESS, uh, in that terminology, RBA. Um, if you don't know what any of these actually mean or how to actually do very simple stuff like ISG, I recommend either asking in Discord or looking up basic tutorials on that. Uh, otherwise, I'll do the best I can to help from beginner to intermediate to advanced in the tutorial itself. Um, and also, this 100% no SRM tutorial is for the Wii VC. Uh, there's quite a few tricks, GIM, Deku Stick as adult, that will crash the game if it's on N64. Uh, so this does has have to be on the Wii VC. This is going to be a tutorial for Ocarina of Time, 100% no SRM. And this is the most up-to-date route as of 03, 2022. So you start off in Link's house. Uh, you want to hold the up-left diagonal. And then after he gets past this little part here, you want to shift to directly left. That's the first bit of movement to leave the house. Sorry, we'll uh, greet you, and you're gonna have to mash through text here. Um, typically, if you're on GameCube controller, you just want to mash A and B. You can also do C up. I personally don't. It's a C stick. But if you can, you know, go for it. Uh, N64, optimally, you want to do A, B, and C up. Uh, after you're done mashing, uh, you want to get a consistent and proper angle, so you're actually gonna want to hold up on the joystick then target and backflip off of the ledge. That's the first bit of movement. Bash, hold up. Okay, and that's the angle we're looking for, just like that. Uh, after you land, you're then going to want to backwalk until you hit a particular texture I like to look for. It's this lighter patch right here. You can see it to the, kind of like the left of Link's left foot. Once you're around there, you can do a single side hop or a double side hop. You're going to want to get one rupee from this piece of grass. Alright. Uh, typically a little before this, you would do a backflip here. Um, but you're then going to backflip, hold the up right notch untargeted, and roll. And head basically directly for the fence. Okay. Well, that wasn't perfect, but you get the idea. Around here, you then backflip over this part. Okay. Enter the crawl space. Now that was really scuffed movement, but I'll show you what it looks like if done properly. Once you're all the way through the crawl space, what you want to do is either tap up or hold up. Uh, I personally like to tap up because holding up it can make you go back in the crawl space by accident. It's just a mess. So basically, hold up or tap up, back walk, uh, maybe like three or four steps, something like that. Two side hops to the right. Then you're going to want to back walk again. There's going to be two rupees in this grass area. Yeah, there it is. Uh, you'll then get ready for a left side hop to grab an additional five rupees. Five side hops. Uh, and then you're gonna keep back walking until Link gets pushed by this sign. You can then release target, hold down, and tap A for the sword. That's for Alex Ross, who he was having trouble finding the Kokiri sword, but I got his back. Okay, uh, you'll have two text boxes to mash through here. Okay. 
Uh, so the movement for this now, you're gonna want to get out of the maze with box movement once again. You want to hold, depending on the camera, uh, a slight angle on the joystick toward the chest. Uh, I got the camera facing, I guess, right? So I would be holding up left toward the chest, target it, and start back walking. Around right here, uh, this is just something you get used to over time. You want to start side hopping to the right now. You want to either do eight side hops and a shimmy to the right, or nine side hops. I prefer nine. Easier. That'll be a, an additional five rupees. And then two side hops to the left with a slight shimmy to exit back the crawl space. There it is. Now I'll show you what it looks like all the way through without pausing. Up next, I'm going to be showing the exit crawl space movement and getting the rest of the rupees that you need for the shield. It should be 40 total, as well as uh, a backup in case you miss bridge, fl uh, bridge clip or whatever. Uh, some renders will argue that Rose Rock movement is better. I heavily disagree in Hundo. It saves six tenths of one second, and it is way more work than the quote boomer movement that I'm about to show you. If you want to do Rose Rock, all the power to you. Go for it. You can find that somewhere else. I'm going to go over same person movement. Alright, so before you exit the crawl space, you do want sword equip. Let's do that right now. Okay. Uh, you're going to want to do a, a backflip out of here. Left side hop. Backflip. Backflip off the fence and pull sword. Three side hops. A forward slash into a backflip. That movement's actually very important. Very important to go fast. Followed by two more side hops. I'll uh, do it a little slow here to show you. So backflip, side hop, backflip, backflip. You're now on the fence. You want to do a backflip and pull sword. One, two, three. Forward slash into a backflip. That gets you an additional five and puts you on the fence in a good position. One, two, three, and release target. You're then going to want to hold the down left notch and do three rolls toward the fence. Two, three. Okay. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can either take this angle and get the joystick correct and go for the bridge clip. I personally like to target the fence. That way it's a straight angle. And adjust. The way I do it loses a couple frames. If you're not trying to be insanely optimal, it's no big deal. It's really preference at a certain point. But you basically have to jump slash at uh, the correct time to clip through the bridge and get on top there. Target. Okay, so I'm on the bridge. This is a pain in the ass, alright? It takes a lot, a lot of getting used to. If you don't get it at first, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you a backup in case you hate this. But for anyone that does get it, no problem. You then do four side hops, grab the blue rupee. Jump off. Not in that direction, obviously. Hit the skipping stones. This blue rupee right here activates and is on a timer from when you touch the first skipping stone. You then jump slash over the text, and you can enter the shop. Now, if you uh, miss the bridge here. Uh, what you can do is just move on. This wastes 10 seconds. This is a backup blue rupee, in case you hate it. You have to go all the way over here, jump past this, and you get an additional jump slash over the text once again. And I will show you what it looks like done in succession.
Okay, up next I'm going to show you shop movement, buying the shield, and escaping the forest. So, you go in the shop, uh, you want to hold up right, and uh, I like to do what uh, Chef Bear does called the backwalk bloopy. Uh, it only saves a couple frames, not a big deal. So you have two options. Uh, what you can do is grab this rupee, come down, buy the shield, or if you want to save a couple frames, you can actually hold target and backwalk it. Like that. Pretty swag stuff. Buy your shield. Mash through this text. Make sure you're far enough away so you don't talk to the shopkeeper, and then you want to roll out. Okay. Uh, so, what I'm going to show you is a couple different ways to exit the forest. The first one is the optimal west escape. You want to hold up when leaving the shop. Until you get to, um, kind of like right here. Uh, I like to look for the edge of the lighter texture to stand. You're going to do two side hops and time a frame-perfect jump slash. This is extremely difficult. It takes many hours, a lot of practice. So don't get discouraged if you can't get this. You, you know, and I'm going to show you other ways. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Okay, you want to hold directly ESS right until you go into the water, and you're going to do something called Quick Draw, where you pull sword right before entering the water. So you get this position. ESS right. Round right there, you Quick Draw. You can hit that again, B, to put sword in your hand. Uh, after that, you're going to want to get a particular angle to line up for the forest guy. Okay, Quick Draw. So when you see the fence there on the right, you can do the equivalent of, equivalent of like two or three S turns. That's a good angle. You want to get about here, release everything, and on the next frame, hit A. And that will get you through Pokey. Uh, you can do this on Buffered. Very difficult, like I said, once again. Uh, so don't get discouraged if you can't do it, and I'll show you two other ways to do this right now. Um, Oh yeah, to roll past this guy is kind of a pain in the ass. You almost want to, like, start running, and when you get to about, I'd say, here, you can roll past him. Just like that. I'll show you real quick again. This is difficult. Okay, I screwed up, so what you can do is buffer it as well. Um, if this ever happens, you know, I made a mistake here, you want to hold basically the opposite direction of where the guard is, and just hit A out of unpause. I hope you get it. And that should push you right through. Alright, so that's one method. Say you screw that up. Oh, dang. I messed that up. You can do the skipping stone, Wes. Uh, you want to get an angle... More or less like this. Uh, you hold basically down right and jump slash ESS right. You want to try to get a similar angle, and I recommend buffering this one because for some reason unbuffered, this is weird. When you're almost into the guard, you can equip your shield, same deal, opposite. Hope it works. It's a little bit better speed and an angle here. Let's see if this works. I can. This is a good backup or just something to go for if you hate the other version. Okay, it worked that time. So I had the proper speed and an angle that worked. So it does indeed work. And I will show you the third backup in case you either hate both of those or screw them both up. Uh, what you can do when leaving the shop is just go over the skipping stones and just straight up start back walking. Get your shield on, on board. I'm going to show you good old-fashioned pokey escape. 
Now, for some reason, this sign is... I don't know, it makes things a little funny. So I like to stab that. Uh, the first version that people like to do is you target here, turn right, slash and shield, and then up slash and hit A one frame later. Almost like ISG timing. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way, if you if you hate that, you can do a shield turn, hold up and B, do ISG timing. It's a pain in the ass. Didn't work. There you go. So yeah, that's another method. It's similar in function, it just takes away one action. And uh, the slowest way, but still not even that bad, and it is the easiest. Uh, you target, turn right, one ESS left. Hold on. Target, turn right, one ESS or two. Might be two. And you want to crouch stab and do your ISG timing. That's the easiest method. I, I recommend this one to beginners the most. Because um, this one, although it's a little faster, it's a pain. It clicks with some runners, though. So it's, it's really a matter of preference. But if you're first starting out, I really recommend that one. There it is. And then same deal. You're just gonna want to roll out. Forget that guy. Now, if he's a pain in the ass, one funny thing you can do... I tend to talk to this guy a lot. He drives me kind of nuts. And I send him off into the void when he pisses me off. And there you go. Easy escape. Alright, um, <clears throat> up next we have the bottle split. Uh, I'm gonna show you the movement to get to Kakariko. Now this is time of day dependent. Uh, it's not, if you're first starting off, it's not the most insanely important. It does, however, lose a ton of time if you mess up this movement too much. So you're gonna wanna try the best you can uh, to get this movement straightened out. I'm gonna first show the optimal movement for more advanced players, and then I'm going to show something for beginners to just get you through it and just get it done. Uh, we'll be going over Owl Skip first. Um, so to give you guys an idea, Owl Skip by itself does save eight seconds due to time of day differences. I'm not gonna go too far into detail on why it saves time. Just trust me, this by itself is eight seconds. Um, you'll see like Glitchymon do this, Axel, Right, like, the the top players, ZFG, Marco did it. Uh, I really, really do not recommend I will skip unless you have a, a very good time already. Uh, you're going to be resetting way more runs than you need to. It's not worth it. Just don't do it unless you're super comfortable and you're going for a really good time. But, okay, anyway. Start off with I will skip. Here we go. Uh, so when you leave, you want to do um, kind of like four side, or four rolls, right? Uh, you turn around right here. Uh, you're gonna want to line up around here on the log. Turn right. Don't target, though. You're actually gonna lose time to that. And you kind of slash and hold ESS down left. You're gonna want to get an angle that looks like this. And just hold that until you get over the little tree stump. This is speed gaming at its finest. Once you're over the stump here, you can then switch to ESS down right. Uh, you can let go of ESS around here. I notice a lot of players tend to continue, continue the shuffle a little bit past this. It's actually not necessary. The, the owl, oh, the owl trigger is like slightly up. Let's see, yeah, it's like slightly up there. So you can actually let that go early, but that's what it looks like. So yeah, you want an angle that looks like this. It's fairly straight, and you want to continue ESS left to get the right position. And I'll show you where to line up once you get past the hump here. Okay, we're over. We're going to ESS right, and we'll roll. 
Now, you want to line up. I tend to look for a lineup that's very much like this. So if you look off in the distance, you'll see the mountain, the mountains in the very far distance. There's one hump, two hump, and then three hump. The lower end of the third hump is where I tend to line up and get a good angle there. I'll show you that again. So you come off of here, the third lower hump is what we're aiming for. Hopefully you guys can actually see that. Now if you do this first owl skip, it is required to skip the second owl, otherwise you will not be making it for the daytime and it will be a reset. Uh, daytime's already screwed up here because I was going slow, mind you, but this is all just for an example. So when you get around here, you actually want to do a jump slash left, delay the jump slash a little bit because you do have sword in hand already. Something like that. Direct ESS right and go right into Kakariko. Just like that. And that's what it looks like. Good luck with Owl Skip. I wish you all the best. I went over it. Can't be mad at me. Okay, now I'm going to show sane person movement for intermediate and beginner people. We're not doing that first Owl Skip. Instead, we're going to side hop and, and pass the the stump there and talk to the owl. Same deal on the movement though. You want to hold slightly upright and do four rolls. One, two, three, four. Target, one, two. Two side hops. Mash A and B. Now this owl is a kind of a jerk. He forces you to pick the second option. He's basically asking, do you understand what I'm saying? First option's no. And it sends you through an infinite loop. My favorite. So you do have to hit, pick the second option. Then he lets you on your merry way. Now the visual cue I like to use here to line up is very similar. I look for that third lower dip in the mountain. You can actually get it from all the way back here. Start your back walk. The jump slash here, you have two options. You can do it with the sword sheathed. Um, it'll be an insta jump slash, or if you like the other timing, you can do a quick backflip and unsheathe it. So it'll be the same timing where you delay a little bit. Like that. Uh, when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm cool with the sheath timing, so I just keep it, but... It's really preference. You're going to have to test it out, see which one you prefer. Okay, so we're brushing against the fence. Now that's an insta slash, because there is a frame delay. So right after the side hop, you can just instantly press B. Not a problem. Skip the second owl, pull the sword for swag. Um, say you screw this up. Oh dang, I messed up. What do I do? Uh, it's not over yet. If you didn't do the first owl skip, just keep going, talk to this guy, and then get your button Kakariko ASAP to make the day cycle. You cannot do this if you did the first owl skip. You won't make it. Next up, we have good old Kukos. Um, so, I like to use Lozuts as an example of what good Kukos are. Uh, for some reason, he's really good. So, if you ever need a reference point, Look at Lozud's PB. Easy, right? But I'll go over it real quick anyway. Uh, you're kind of on a time restraint for this one as well because you want, ideally you want to do Navi dive into the well and Navi is on a timer. Uh, I believe it's about two and a half minutes. Um, so you want to be able to do the Kukos, get the bottle and still have Navi to do a quicker trick. Now, if you do lose Navi, I'll go over a backup. It's not a big deal. Um, we'll go over that with the lens split, but for now, I'm going to show you the best I can with Kukos. Um, the most you will lose, ideally, is 10 seconds to RNG. It is RNG dependent, but if you're losing more than 10 seconds to top runners, it is your movement that's losing that time. So be aware of that. 
and you know do the best you can to move fast on this one uh, i'll show you real quick what to do the best i can all right the safe state did i will skip so it's going to be spooky kakariko with no music i personally hate it but it is what it is uh, so when you first enter, you want to do rolls to the first chicken. This is RNG. Where it is, you just gotta get used to it. You know, do the best you can. It's one of those deals. So, we start rolling, find the chicken. Alright, he is far. Alright, I got him. So, uh, what you want to do is line up to the left of the house at an angle something similar to this and start back walking for the first chicken. It's like that. Okay. See that pass. And when you see the other edge of the house, right there, you can see the, the top left where almost past the edge of the house, you then want to turn around down left and toss the chicken at a at an angle that'll show you. I can't really describe it. I have to just basically show you here. Right? Okay, we're past the house. Angle like that. Two, three, four. Okay, so four rolls. We'll then smash into this box and walk past the chicken to send it running in the opposite direction. Right? Okay, and that sends it running. You then want to turn to the left here and roll up the stairs uh, three rolls and do a slight up left angle to do a backflip. One, two, three. Backflip, start back walking. You can see the stairs are here. Uh, you then want to do basically down right and start rolling toward the chicken at the top of these stairs. Okay, he's far away. This is bad RNG. Now, optimally here, you're going to want to start back walking until you hit the stairs and then turn around. Okay. Turn around. Okay. You float over. Target. Uh, you have two ways you can go here. Um... A little more advanced would be to go up here on the roof toward this chicken down here. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just go around this way. It's perfectly fine. It only loses a couple seconds. Now, uh, for these two chickens, you want to toss them both at a particular angle so they both travel toward the pen together. Um, it's it's going to be almost a straight angle with this fence in front of us, right? So, like, we turn here and toss like that. That's basically the general idea you want. And get down here, go to the fence, toss it at an angle, toss it at an angle. Okay, that, that should be pretty good, actually. Uh, you're then going to want to head back toward the chicken where you crush the box. I like to jump off this little ledge here. It's like that. Oh, we got him. Okay. Now, you want to kite these chickens toward the pen, and it's dependent on where Link is actually looking. Uh, they'll go in the exact opposite of where you're looking. So if you're looking this way, they'll go to the left, right? Uh, if you're over here, they'll go more right. And you don't want that. So you want to force them to the left. Move that way. Start start back walking. Alright, we'll get the first set in the pen. This is a, a little bit of RNG here. You gotta do the best you can. It is what it is. Okay, that's the first half of Kukos. Uh, Anju here has a massive talk box. It, this is such a pain for so many runners. Uh, you want to actually avoid that the best you can. So, I tend to not even roll. Sometimes even back walk. If the chicken's really far away like this. You can get away with a roll like that. Okay, now this bit of movement, once you grab him, you want to back walk when you go up the stairs. Line up toward the edge of the fence, like around here, and start back walking. There we go. So yeah, we want to line up so that the back walk leads us more or less straight. Uh, now, to avoid a short hop on this one, you want to not brush against this fence, because you get a short hop like that, you get screwed. It's really nothing you want to do. So you want to make sure you're kind of not against the fence and you get full speed off of that, so you land on top. That's ideal anyway. Uh, if you do get a short hop, you can let go of the chicken ledge grab. Not ideal, but it's a, a quick save. But yeah, you want to 
you want to go for something like this. Now you want to turn down right once you're here and toss the chicken in that direction. This is important because of the upcoming movement. It'll force the chicken to go in a position that'll be good later. So once you're here, down right, toss it. Okay? Jump over here, get this one. Catch us, Clint. And this is what the movement looks like for this. Now for this, you want to throw the chicken toward that box that you see on that other ledge over there. Uh, this will be another manipulation thing that'll put the chicken in the spot that you want. So toss it there, climb up this fence. You're going to want to jump off this and hit the ladder. Uh, ideally, you would roll, get a correct angle, and jump like that. This can be a little bit of a pain at first. It's just something you have to practice. It is what it is. If you do miss this ladder, like let's say you mess this up. Oh, I messed this up. You can just climb up. It's fine. This wastes like eight seconds. It sucks, but it's not run over. All right, and now the last chicken. Uh, kind of a similar idea. You don't want to be too close to the windmill. You can get a uh, something like that where you drop the chicken. It can be a mess. Uh, ideally, you want to be slightly away from it, like around here. Let's start traveling toward the other two. Okay, this is a really good position, actually. Um, around here, you want to actually drop the chicken. Don't go too far. This can screw up the positioning. I would say a little bit past the stairs on the brick house to the right there. This is where you want to drop. You want to get the chicken that's further to the right now. We're going to be slashing this guy and making them travel at the same time. This is what it looks like. So that they travel like that. Right, so right to the pen. That's what you're looking for. So after we drop the guy, grab him, toss him, slash him, and then we're going to roll and get the last guy. Get a good angle toward the pen. It takes practice, but you'll get it. Trust me. Back walk. Once we get around here, you want to turn around. Start tossing them in. Make sure to target these guys if they're near Anju. Otherwise, oh, you'll speak to her by accident. Losing time all day. And then you can get your bottle. One thing I do want to mention... So when you're here, you get the chickens in the pen. On the very last chicken, you want to wait until this chicken is all the way in the pen before you talk to Anju. If this chicken is like kind of in the pen, it can cause a soft lock. Or she might not give you the bottle at all. So you want to wait until that thing lands, alright? Trust me. Otherwise you're going to find yourself resetting. It happens. Something like that. Mash through the text, get yourself a bottle. And that'll be it. Good luck with Kukos. Uh, okay, so next up I'm going to show how to enter the well. Optimally if you have Navi, as well as equips. And also a backup if you were too slow with Kukos and you lost Navi. It does happen if you're first starting off. Uh, first what we'll go over is if you did West Escape unbuffered, you had a pretty good bottle and Navi is still with you. I don't even know if she's with me. Yeah, she's with me on the safe state. Alright, so what you want to do is after you get the bottle, you want to equip Ocarina and Bottle. Uh, I prefer these equips. You can do whatever you want. Uh, ideally, it would be Ocarina C down, Bottle C right for upcoming tricks later. I do recommend these equips, but if you hate them, then you're going to have to figure that out. Uh, also do that and equip shield. You can roll past Anju out of unpause. That way you don't talk to her. Uh, th there's something to do with pausing where it takes speak off of A, so you can just roll past NPCs out of unpause. Um, otherwise it would, right, you would talk to her. Uh, so ideally you equip those. Roll, and then one, two, three, four rolls. Now you're going to want to do Navi Dive, uh, which is... 
Basically, you want to do a jump slash and cancel the jump slash animation by hitting Navi, and it will force you to go to the very bottom of the well, past the water actor. It There's some shenanigans going on where it, it ignores the water actor. No clue why. All I know is it works. I just press buttons, man. So, uh, to perform this, you climb up. You want to jump off and go neutral on the stick. This is very important, because if you're holding forward, you get a jump slash that's a little too far. So you want to jump off, neutral, jump slash, hit Navi, and it brings you to the bottom. I'll show you one more time. Jump off, neutral in the air, jump slash, hit Navi. Okay? Clear it, and you can enter the well. Say you were too slow, and uh, you screwed up, you don't have Navi anymore, what are you going to do? Uh, you can actually use a Cuckoo for this. So what you do is you go get yourself a Cuckoo. Whoops, I did not mean to slash him, but he's fine there. No big deal. You want to get Infinite Sword Glitch. If you don't know how to do this, you're going to have to look up a tutorial. Uh, best I can do is just explain that you, it's a crouch stab interrupted by something. An A press from an NPC, or a sign, or something. Um, you can get it off of... And you. You basically talk to her in the middle of the crouch step to interrupt it. Uh, you can get it off of the sign here, if you prefer it. There it is. Whatever, right? Just get your ISG when the cuckoo's already out. Uh, and we're gonna have to be careful to not target this cuckoo. Because uh, what can happen is... Like, if you target them, let's see. Oh, there it is. It can activate the cutscene. So you want to be very careful with that. Pick them up. Okay, there's no green arrow. We can start moving toward the well. Just go slow when you're turning and stuff. Okay, target this. Turn around. Now, when you're in this position, you're going to want to hold target and backflip and hit shield all in the same frame. So it looks like that, and Link will dive. Now I like to mash start here. Just to see where I am, okay? I see the wells to my left, so I can start moving that way. And that is the backup Cuckoo dive. Now I'm gonna go over equips real quick. If you got... Forest escape, but it was not unbuffered and you needed your shield. Uh, okay, so yeah, we have our shield. At this point, you don't want to actually do any equips. Uh, you want to save your equip for bottom of the well if you already have your shield on. So you'll just do your normal navy dive here. Just like that. Okay. Alrighty, one of uh, my favorite parts of the run. <laughs> Just kidding. Alright, so this is bottom of the well. This is arguably one of the toughest parts of the entire run, if 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 not definitely child one, uh, besides guards, but that's more RNG. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go over as much as I can. I'm going to do the best I can to explain this. Bottom of the well is extremely difficult. Um, even top runners reset here all the time. It's just a very difficult section. It requires a lot of practice. Uh, if you don't get this stuff right away, don't become discouraged. You know, you gotta keep going at it. I even recommend to newer players that if you're not getting this, don't get stuck on it. You know, just move on to other parts of the tutorial uh, and come back to this later when you're more used to the game itself. That's how difficult it is, all right? Um, so having said that, let's go into it. Enter the well. Two rolls to crawl space. From here, you're gonna to want to hold down to right, and then shift to down, roll. Slash this guy, roll past him. Right here is a pot, you want to get ISG off of this by stabbing it. Should be auto ISG. Clear that text box ASAP. You're gonna to want to do rolls just like this, box movement, get the first key. This is one key movement, by the way. Clear that ASAP, target, backflip, do a down roll. Uh, to do that down roll, oh, I should have made a save state, sorry. Could always use bottom of the well practice anyway. 
Uh, same deal. We're gonna shift down right to down. We can pull sword or not, slash the sky. ISG. Roll, 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 target, side hop. Get that first key. All right, I'll make a save state here. Uh, so after this first key, like I was saying, you wanna do a backflip down roll. Uh, to do this, you just simply target, do your backflip, hit A and release target to get this angle, right? Backflip, A and release target. That gets you an angle like that. And then you're gonna wanna retarget. Eight rolls, get in the corner till Link starts doing this. And on a specific timing, you're actually gonna backflip on the enemy bubble. Um, now this timing's really tough. The only thing I can suggest is you're gonna have to practice it get the music consistent, make a music cue, an audio cue, something that can get that consistent for one key. This is for beginners, by the way. I'll go over two key after this, but you gotta do the best you can. Uh, if you miss this cycle, if you have to do this a second time, it's 28 seconds. So this is not something you wanna miss. Nobody wants to miss this. But that's a quick angle. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. What I like to listen for is the wings flap. Uh, it'll be a little harder. It'll be a little hard to hear at first, but essentially you'll hear the wing flapping from the enemy get a little louder. And uh, I do wear headphones for this section for that specific reason. And that's when you know to backflip. It, it's a fairly wide window frame wise, but it's still tight enough where it takes practice. So. Uh, just try to listen for louder wing flaps coming up here. That was early. Listening. There it is. So if you if you listen real quick, you can back the video up. You hear wing flaps further out, but they get much louder. And on the second louder wing flap is when I backflip. Okay. Uh, so that's the one key movement, and I'll go over two key real quick, and then we'll do ocarina dive. One of the safe states was that bottle. All right, two keys a little more advanced. I really don't recommend this for new players. If you want to go for it, cool. I don't even go for this personally, but I'll show you how to do it. Same movement. Now, after you get ISG, you want to want to roll four times. Aim for a specific spot, and you can get the chest. I already messed it up. Okay. ISG, I'll make a save state. One, two, three, four. Okay, target on the chest. Now, uh, what I prefer, to, you can do this in a few different ways. ZFG rolls. Um, me and Glitchymon, like Fuzzy, I think Axel, we all like to side hop. That's the preferred method to the second key. So target, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then you can get the second key. Same movement out of here as the other one. Backflip, side roll, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Listen for those wing flaps. There you go. That's two key movement. Whew. All right. Good luck with that. I recommend one key for beginners. Like I said though, do what you want. Uh, now for Ocarina Dive, um, you can very easily do this unbuffered. Uh, the strat I like to use is the tap down. Oh, this, this angle is a little funny. You can kind of like... 
hit down left and then ocarina like a frame after um for newer players what i recommend though uh let me get a better angle on this sorry it's kind of tough to describe yeah this is great practice I'm going to show you an unbuffered and a buffered way to do this, if you want to play it safe. This is a pretty ideal one key. This is what you're looking for. This takes a lot of practice, all this stuff. Alright, listen for the audio cue with the wing flaps. Alright, perfect. So, this is a good height that you want. Um, what I like to do is I like to tap down, kinda, and then hit Ocarina, so it looks like that. Um, don't hold down, because then you'll just fall to the ground. You want to do a quick tap, like that, where, where Link's feet kinda jiggle. And then hit Ocarina one frame after that. Now, if this is a pain and you're like, what the fuck? I don't understand this. You can actually buffer this. Uh, so say you're in this position, hit pause, buffer one frame or two, where Fink's, Link's feet will kind of do that little dancing shuffle, right? Uh, that's the frame where you can actually hit Ocarina and it should be consistent. Out of unpause, you'll just hit Ocarina. I'll show you that again. This is buffered. Easy. And if you're trying to do it unbuffered, tap down in Ocarina. Don't hold down. Okay, so after Ocarina Dive, um, there's two options uh, to get to the area, area where you float up to the Chew Chest. Uh, you can do a Wes from this position, or you can just roll it out. I'll show you both ways, and then I'll show you how to float up to the Chew Chest more importantly, without getting stuck. Uh, so, this is right after Ocarina Dive, the save state. Uh, you want to let, let go of, you know, you want to press B to get rid of the Ocarina, target, do a side hop, quick draw your sword, stab, and hold ESS and target. You then ESS right, then ESS left, and you basically want to make your way to right here. That's what you'll be aiming for there. Uh, if you're not comfortable with Wessing, it saves five seconds, by the way. Another another thing for beginners is not necessary. Uh, what you can do is just exit and start heading toward this direction. Start rolling toward the acid pool. Alright, now once you're here, either off of the Wes or off of rolling, um... This can be a little complicated at first. A lot of people get stuck. I'm going to explain how to not get stuck. It's... I found a consistent way to do it. Uh, basically, you want to take it at a... Kind of an odd angle here. Over the lava pool. Turn around. You want to float up untargeted till you're about this position. I like to use this visual cue where... Link's head is... Kind of aligned with those textures you can see over there. Um... And at this point, you want to target and hold slightly up from the down right notch. Start mashing. And then once that happens, you should be able to just float on forward like that. I mash here. Oh, I got stuck. So let me redo this. Float up. Okay, we target, slightly up, mash. Okay, see that little juke move that Link did there? He's going around a piece of collision. Um, that's what you want to look for when this happens. That's how you can guarantee to not get stuck doing this shit. So once again, you take the angle, you go up, you target here, slightly up, boom, juke around, and then you go directly into the downright notch once that juke is done. 
and you can stop mashing at that point. Okay, and once Link does this kind of like weird animation that means he's free, you can just hold back for a frame, and then you can float on forward. I'll show it again. Float up, target, slightly upright, juke, downright, moves again, hold down. And if you want to jump slash to guarantee you make it, that's cool too. But that's the important part. Over the lava pool, float up untargeted. Up of the upright notch, good. Downright notch, I meant downright, sorry. And there you go. Now the important part I've noticed to not getting stuck is that kind of like juke animation he does over the collision. Boom, that right there. If he doesn't do that, I've noticed that you may not get stuck, but there is a possibility you get stuck. It's very strange. I can't fully explain it. All I know is that it just works. Thanks, Todd. Uh, and then you want to grab the chews and get ready to do your chew clip. Alright, uh, this is going to be the chew clip uh, to the dead hand room. Uh, this is kind of a tough trick to get used to at first. Uh, I'll do the best I can to explain it here. Uh, so basically, you want to align Link's um, feet, like left foot, with like this line right here, this little texture. And that's about where you want to be on the vines. It's not too incredibly precise, but this is a general good way to tell that it's a good position. Uh, you want to either climb up to this right here, one step below the second line on the vine, or on the actual second line of the vine itself. Either way works. Um, when I'm playing, I tend to climb up here, just to play it safe. Uh, so I'll make a save state. So to do this, you want to hold target. Uh, you want to do down and A for one or two frames. That's one frame. And then you want to equip your choose. And then hold up and hit chew and shield out of unpause. So hold target, drop down, that's one frame. Equip, out of unpause, up, chew, and then shield. Just like that. Or you can drop down for two frames and do the same thing. You get a little bit of a, a lower height, but they both work, as long as you're holding target. So, uh, if you suck with the drop-down frames, uh, you can just buffer it, it's fine. So, you can go here, hold target, right? Hold down, drop down, that's zero, that's one drop-down. Do your equips, and then out of unpause, like I said, up. Hold target, up. Chew, and then shield. And that's how you clip out, okay? Uh, you can also do this unbuffered. Some some runners do this unbuffered. It's the same concept where you hold target, down an A for one frame, up chew and shield on the next. Just like that. It's actually not hard once you get used to it. Um, so once you clip through, uh, you want to hold a certain angle. That way you stay in the water. Uh, I like to hold slightly up from up left. Uh, so if this is a perfect notch in the up left, you want to hold, like, slightly up from that. Hopefully you can see that in my input display there. And, uh, you want to go kind of straight parallel with the bubble pathing. That way you stay in the water. Right? Like that. You go too far right, you'll fall. You go too far left, you'll fall. You want to mash B here. Or you can mash B and A, but just B is fine. And uh, the first big inbounds toughy is to do this jump slash into the right here on the spider room. So you want to kind of hold right, and when Link starts to fall, you can jump slash. And if you do it right, you should be able to make it. Slightly up. Get a straight angle. Link starts to fall, jump slash in. That's what you want to do. After this, you have two options. Whoops. Uh, 
Okay, so you're here, you do the jump slash, you have two options for this. Uh, optimally, you actually want to do a roll. It's a little tough though, it depends. Oh, I missed it, so you don't want that to happen. A lot, and you can pop up, there's a lot of ways to make mistakes here. This takes a lot of practice. But the, the trick is to wait until Link starts to fall a little bit. Then you jump slash. If you jump slash right away, it's not going to work. Alright, so once you make it through, optimally you want to do a roll. Start climbing. Or you can do side hops. Right? Uh, you can either climb all the way up, go right to the dead hand room, uh, or you can do the sword pull, which is a little bit higher level stuff. Saves a couple frames, no big deal. Uh, I'll just explain real quick how to do sword pull. Once you get to about right here, you simply hold down an A, hold down an A the whole time, and then hit B. And then he automatically does that. So I'll show that again. You do the jump slash, climb up, down A, B. And that's the way to do your sword pull, and after that you can go to the dead hand room. Uh, this right here, this is RNG, where he pops up. I'm not going to go over all the different positions, I'm just going to give you the general I idea on how to fight Dead Hand. Um, you want to do a jump slash like this at the same time the hand grabs you, and it can actually prevent him from grabbing you. It's a, it's a timing that takes practice. You'll get it, just keep, keep at it. This particular spawn was actually really good. You want something like this, ideally. Since you have a jump slash stored in your crouch stab, the best way to do this fight is two crouch stabs. One, two. And then you want to manipulate dead hand to avoid those hands. Uh, it's similar to Kuko's, where he will actually run away from Link. So depending on where you're looking and standing, dead hand will evade in the opposite direction. So I want to basically look toward the hand and move in that direction to get him to move away from the hand. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll basically do that. And since I'm toward the hand, notice how he's going in that direction, right? So I got him where I want. And uh, the visual cue you're looking for to jump slash this guy is his left arm will do kind of like a jiggle. One jiggle, two jiggle, and you can jump slash him again. Look for that again. Boom. Jiggle. Right? And then uh, the second time he runs away from you, this is the second phase, you cannot target him, so you're going to have to get a YOLO angle, basically. Same deal. You want to jump slash when the left arm does the second jiggle. And I can't get it because I screwed up. There we go. Ideally, you want to hit him with two jump slashes on that one. Uh, if you do screw this up... Oh, I messed up. Just get your get your jump slash stored again. Get a second spawn, and two crouch stabs will finish him off. And then you'll be all set to get the lens. Alright, now, uh, after we have lens... Uh, there's a few things I need to go over. This is going to be a lot of information, so you're going to have to pick and choose what's good for you, depending on your skill level, what you're comfortable with, etc., right? Uh, I'm going to start off with the most optimal stuff, as always, and then I'll go to intermediate, beginner, and then backups. Um, so if you did, I will skip. And you want to do the optimal route, you're going to want to do Skulltula Vine Clip here to save a chew for later. And I will show you a couple different ways to actually achieve this, best I can. Uh, after the save state you want to target, roll twice, go through this door. Um, the, the skull vine clip I like to do, it has kind of a YOLO position. Um, I don't know why I do this, I guess I just learned it like this. This is how ZFG does it. Nobody else does it like this. But uh, I did time it, <laughs> even with three pauses, it's equal to the chew clip still, so there is that, if you can actually get it. 
Um, so I'll, I'll explain real quick the optimal. You hold upright in the notch and then switch to up to a position that's around here. Um, where Link's right foot kind of touches the line there that it's right next to. Uh, that's kind of what you're aiming for. And you want to do a quick draw of your sword and shield to stop your position. And do an insta horizontal slash. And then back up and climb down the vines into a specific position. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so that's what that position looks like. This is actually perfect. Um, let me make a save state. Now, there's two frames that you can land on here. This particular frame that I paused on, this is one frame early. Um, what I like to look for is, you notice how the Skulltula leg has that super thin leg in the very top right there? Uh, when the, the second leg to the further right, you don't always see that, it's kind of weird. But the, the super thin leg to the left, that is more consistent. You'll always see that if it's this particular frame. This is one frame early, okay? So if you get this, you need to buffer one frame. Okay. Uh, you'll get this kind of thicker leg. This right here is frame number one for working frames of the drop down. Uh, so you want to pause on this frame if you get it, and you want to drop down for, is it three frames? Uh, yeah, it, well, it'll be two frames to drop down, but it'll basically be three frames you're advancing. So you hit down an A out of unpause. That's zero, one, two, and you'll hear a little tick noise. That's how you know that's the correct frame to hold up. Uh, you can listen for it again. Oh, me. So, I'll pause here. Down an A. Zero. One. Listen for the tick. Okay, you heard that? So, when you get that, you want to then just simply hold up. And that'll clip you through with that particular frame. Uh, now, if you get a slightly later frame, uh, this takes a lot of practice. But it'll look like this. This is frame two. That works for the Skull Tool of Vine Clip. Pause here. This will be a one frame drop down. So that's zero. And that's one. You hear the tick once again. That's the audio cue I listen for. Uh, and if you hear that tick, you then know you can hold up. Now that does clip you slightly higher in the water. But both of these frames can allow uh, the jump slash into the like like cage. So that's second frame. Just like that. Okay. This once again this is the later frame. Zero. One drop down frame. Heard the tick. Hold up. Okay. So that's the quickest possible vine clip that you can get. That is as a two pause, that's still faster than chew clip. Three pause, it's equal to chew, chew clip. So if you can do that one, go for it. I really don't recommend it. It's what I, me and ZFG do. Nobody else does it. It's really dumb to go for, but yeah, good luck. Um, so I'll show you one real quick that is a little slower, but it's far more consistent. Uh, you go to the sledge, you back walk, climb up, turn left. Do a slash, just like that. ESS left and hold target. You then want to hit the Skulltula when he's at the peak. Um, so like around there, it's a, it, there's a couple frames of leniency. Uh, this might be a little late, but when he's like way down here, it's just simply not going to work. He needs to be further up. So let me show you again. Drop down, climb up, that slash, turn left. Okay, and now we wait. When he's at his peak like this, uh, you pause and let go of target. Then you're going to want to hit B, and, and then one frame after, hold forward to climb down the vines. So it looks like that. 
Okay. So he's at his peak. Let go of target. B up. And then you're going to want to climb down and look for those same exact frames I just discussed. Uh... Okay, so there's the little leg, right? That's what I was talking about, where you don't always get the second bigger leg, but you always have this thinner one right here. This is one frame early. So the first drop down frame is that one right there. That's how you know how to look for it in the top right. So that same frames that I just discussed, this is two drop down frames. So that's one drop down, that's two. You hear the tick, that's how you know to hold up. Okay. Say you get the later frame. You won't see anything at all with this setup. It's kind of harder to know, but... Zero. One drop down, you heard the tick. Hold up. And that's the slightly slower... Skull Vine clip. Uh, newer players that want to do this, I would recommend this at first. But I'm going to go over the Chew Vine clip. Which, you know, there's still top players that do Chew Vine clip because they hate Skull Vine clip. It's completely understandable. I don't expect anyone new to do the optimal shit. It's not fucking worth it. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you're doing Chew Vine clip, um, it's much easier in my opinion. You can either kill this guy or you can do this and do a side hop maneuver to avoid him. Uh, so what I recommend is this setup. There's many different setups for this. I recommend this one because it gives you good height in the water that's more consistent. Uh, Zanky found this. Excellent setup. It's it's very new. It's like less than a month old. So I recommend learning this one, but if it doesn't work, you can look up other setups. Alright, so anyway. You get in this corner with this camera angle. You want to turn, keeping the camera angle. Right, you don't want the camera to actually spin like that. For some reason it screws it up. So, you keep this camera angle, turn left, crouch stab, hold up and crouch stab, and that'll give you the position. I'll do that again. Keep this angle, turn, crouch stab, hold up, crouch stab. Okay. When you have this position, insta drop the chew. You want to shield drop that, so it insta drops. Side hop, one, two. Now you're gonna have to time this where the chew comes around. I'll show you what it looks like unbuffered and then buffered. If I could do it. There it is. I was going too uh, late. But yeah, that that's what it looks like. Um, I'm, I'm guessing with it buffered, you have many frames. So you can basically just buffer till the chew comes around the corner. Like, uh, let's say when it's about at Link's head. You're gonna have to test this out on your own. Do one drop down frame by holding down an A, right? And then you wanna simply just hold up out of unpause after that one drop down. No. I'll try a little bit later. One drop down. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so we do want the chew to be there a little later. Let's say halfway down Link's body. I'll try this out. That's zero. That's one drop down, and then we simply hold up. Okay, that'll work. So yeah, you want you want to basically wait until the chew is past Link's head. This is really late. We'll see if this works too. One drop down. Well, there you go. So it looks like it's about four frames of leniency, but you want to wait until the chew at least gets from his below his head to his feet. One drop down frame, that's zero. That's one. Hold up. Alright, now that you've figured out how to get the Skull or Chew Vine clip, I'm going to show you how to do the jump slash into the cage, the roll into the cage, and also how to get the final token, uh, the, the Hillian shields, and a backup in case you void out or you screw this up. Um, so I have a save state here after the clip. You want to hold kind of up leftish 
and find a good position to be parallel. Um, basically, this area right here is what you're aiming for to swim. If you have really low height into the water, you want to get about here and listen for the like like doing its little noises. And you want to get a, a specific height, like around here. You can then do that, turn around, and this is uh, the way you roll into the cage. Now this is actually pretty precise. This is a pain in the ass. I don't like this strap, but some people prefer it. It is slower. That can happen. That's why I don't like it. But yeah, you basically swim up here, turn around, roll into the cage best you can. Avoid that, obviously. This is why I do not recommend this. Okay. But yeah, that's the general concept. Good luck practicing that. I personally hate it. But that is one way to do it. If you're really bad at that, I believe you can jump slash out of bounds. Just like this. A little easier. Much slower, but it's safe. You can kill the like like and go through. And that's another way to get in there. Now I'm going to show you the jump slash into the cage, which actually does save two and a half seconds. I also find it easier personally. So you got your clip out, you're mashing B, I hear the like like, I'm going to suck twice. I want to get an angle like this, and kind of jump slash like that. The anti-grav effect should suck you up. You take kind of like a wider angle. Uh, you can even play it safe and just jump slash out of bounds like this. You may need to kill the like like though, otherwise that'll happen. You're losing 30 seconds. But that's basically the idea there. <clears throat> now once you're in the cage, there's two things you can do. Oh. Alright. <clears throat> so if you're just starting off, this like like is killing you. Uh, what you can do after the jump slash is just stab him real quick. It puts him in a stunned state where he's just chilling for a minute. It gives you a little bit, little bit of extra time. You want to get this Helion shield as well as the skull. Um, the optimal way is to hover off of the skull Tula. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Uh, you want to get ISG by targeting ISG off the chest. This will give you a straight angle where you can just target, move forward a little bit, backflip forward on the chest, and then backflip on the skull. That's how you start. Uh, so you can do that. Okay. The visual cue I like to look for here when I'm in this hover state is Link's right foot. When it's about at its peak here, that's how you know you can backflip. Holding down the entire time, by the way, and holding shield. Uh, that's important. Holding down gives a specific and consistent visual cue. So yeah, I'll go until boom, kind of like that, and then backflip. And it kills the Skull Tula, right? So if you want to do that, hold shield, peak of the right foot, boom. Once the Skull Tool is dead, you actually want to release shield, but continue to hold down. And then when you hear the token spawn, da 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 ding right? That's when you know to backflip. Right there. And you can get it. It's consistent. So just hold down and shield. Peak of the right foot. Peak of the right foot. Release shield. Easy. If you can't do this hover, it's no big deal. It only saves a few seconds. There is a second option. Uh, what you can do is, after you get the shield, target the chest, jump slash, and then turn around and hold down. You're going to wait for the like like to come to you. Right when it's about to suck like this, you simply backflip and it will be an auto grab of the token. Clear it out, and you can save warp out. Excuse 
excuse me, I just had to cough. Uh, let's say you miss this. Getting into the cage. And you're like, shit, what do I do? There is a backup that I can go over later. Uh, basically, you can say fuck this. Like, say you void out by accident, you're sick of resetting. You can just save warp out. You can go shieldless, and uh, this is an extra shield. <laughs> As adult. Let's see, from Kakariko. This is for super new people, by the way. This loses like a minute and a half or something, so you don't want to do this unless you have to. This grave right here actually does have a shield you can get. And this is absolutely worst case scenario. Well, okay, trust me, it has a shield if it's not in your inventory. <laughs> Basically, it needs to not be in inventory. And uh, yeah, there'll be a shield in there. Trust me on this one. But that's a that's just a backup. Um, otherwise, I recommend trying to get this. Okay, yeah. You would then save warp out, head to the outside of the well. All right. After you save warp out of the well, start up your game. Exit the well. Uh, so a little. Quick little couple frame time save. You can actually do a jump slash into the water here. Uh, it's not that important. Or you can just um, do a quick backflip. Either way works. Or if you're new, you don't have to worry about it. You can just roll. I figured I'd just go over that real quick. Basically, you do a neutral jump slash and then hold up after. Uh, it's pretty advanced movement, but it's also swag if you're into it. Um, so this Hess right here... Uh, if you are okay with Hessing, <clears throat> or if you want to at least try it, this does save 10 seconds. This is really good to get. Uh, you don't need it. Uh, you can just backwalk if you're newer, but I'll show you the Hess, and then I'll show you the backwalk. Uh, there's a couple different methods you can do. Personally, I like to do the Crouch Stab, Target, and Jump Slash. This gives you perfect distance to do the Hess. Uh, there's other ways where you can, like, YOLO it, like this, stuff like that. But I'm gonna show you my method. So you crouch, stab, target, and then jump, slash, and hold shield. Then you can do a 180. If I can do it. There it is. Uh, this will give you the perfect distance. And then you can just hold ESS right. Once you're down the stairs, you can switch to left. S right out of Kakariko. Uh, this is more of a YOLO one where you just stab the sign, ESS left. Down the stairs, you can get your quick angle. Uh, if you're not into Hessing, just kind of line up with the left side of the house. Like in between those two like windows there, right? Just back walk it out. Just like that. It should be a straight... No problem. Right right out. Ah, close enough. You get the idea. Alright. This is my preferred method. I just find it easier for consistency. Alright. So, we have to skip this owl again. If you did both owl skips... And you're going for the optimal stuff. You did Skull Vine Clip. <clears throat> you're going to want to do a Hess here to mark it. It saves four seconds. So that means I will skip plus this strat with the Hess will save 12 seconds total. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. And I'll explain how to skip the Owl. And then I'll show you the Hessless and all that other stuff. Uh, so you want to hold upright and out of this loading zone. <clears throat> and go to the wall, target three side hops to the left. One, two, three. Turn around and target the sign, and then drag Link away. And you want to actually turn around in time.
before that bridge starts to go up. Uh, that way it actually gets stuck. This is called Schrodinger's Chain. It's both up and down at the same time. So yeah, the bridge is technically up, but the chain is down. And this man is off the chain. Okay, terrible joke. Anyway. Uh, that's the concept. You want to keep it off screen while that's happening. So to do the Hess, <clears throat> you want to actually pull after the second side hop and do the sign trick. I'll show you what that looks like. One, two, pull. Turn around. And there's your Hess. Stop when you get to the bridge. Right on the chain. Easy peasy, right? Uh, if you're not doing that Hess, <clears throat> which I don't recommend... Uh, well, well, first of all, if you didn't do Owl Skip, there's no point in doing that Hess, because you do have to wait anyway. So let's say you didn't do Owl Skip, you just do... Boom. Boom. That. Target the sign, turn around. And you're just gonna back walk with this angle. Okay, <clears throat> so once you're here, you have to collect 60 rupees. You want to get on the chain, release target. Target here, back walk till you get all 60. And you also optimally do want to take a half a heart of damage. Uh, so there's a few way to, ways to do this. You can either do this, drop down, I think, I think Axel does this. Um, I prefer the jump slash method. So, like that, jump slash, roll. Uh, Glitchy does, like, some weird twisted angle. I'm not even sure how he does it, if I'm being honest. But he does, like, a curved back walk. I don't know, you'd have to ask Glitchy how he does that. Like that. That's what Glitchy does. It's super fast, but it, it's, like, way above my pay grade. Um, but yeah, anyway, you want to get those 60 rupees. Oh, this man is off the chain. Take your half a heart. Move in. One single roll into lots of pots. <clears throat> uh, now, you want to do a long roll here, which is roll and hold up, and then slightly... It's not quite the upright notch, it's like slightly up from the upright notch into another long roll. So you break the box like this. Um, this is just more optimal movement. It's not a big deal. If you screw this up, you can take it from a straight angle. Jump slash that guy. This pot right here has five rupees. You're gonna want that five. And then you're gonna want this five as well. You want 70 rupees total. I'll show you what it looks like. Oh. Okay, jump slash. Five, collect the token. One, two... Three, five, exit the door. Now the market movement's simple. Uh, space out your rolls. If you don't know how to roll properly, I recommend either counting the number of rolls I do and spacing them out like this, or uh, this roll trainer on GZ that gives you good rolls. Uh, another good thing that people use is you can listen to boot clicks. Uh, every time you hear the boot clicks after a roll, that's how you know you can do another roll. Spamming rolls like this is very slow, believe it or not. You want to actually space them out, so I'll show you a decent movement looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rolls. Have a little cutscene here. Now you need to actually leave and re-enter to get Malin in here. Boom. Roll to the up right. Talk to this owl. Uh, there's no point in skipping this guy. It is actually way slower to skip him. We need to do this anyway. Alright, so up next I'm gonna show you RBA. One, two, three rolls, bonk the tree. You want to pull sword and get damaged by the skull there. 
Uh, you want to be down to one and a half hearts. This is optimal. Damage this guy, and I do recommend collecting the token before RBA. Uh, it's a little faster to kill him and then RBA, then collect the token, but it ends up being an issue where a fairy can spawn, screw up your health, it can be very bad. So I just recommend collecting the token. Just do it that way. Unless you want to be super optimal. It's whatever, it's not my business. Anyway. Get the right save state. Bottle B. Show you this again. Three rolls. Full sword, get damage, jump slash. Collect the token. Then we'll get ready for Bottle B. Alright. Up next we have the first RBA of the run. Uh, this is very important as far as equips go. And what you do. Uh, so I went over how you want your health to be at one and a half at this point. Uh, optimally you would have seven choose. Uh, some people might have eight if you didn't do owl skip and you also did skull clip but let's just say for now it's seven um so you want to go over here get this rock i recommend tossing it this way sometimes it can drop hearts and really screw you up uh, i see some runners toss it here and like hearts can float down or oh is that a fairy sometimes a death fairy appears it's the death of the run but I'm going to show you how to do RBA anyway. Uh, so you want to get against this tree. Um, to people doing this unbuffered, uh, I don't recommend this to new players. I recommend buffering this 100%. But if you want to do this unbuffered, if you think you're ready for that, the trick to doing it unbuffered is to shield drop the chew, let go a shield, and then swipe bottle and reshield, and then hit B on the proper frame. And you also want to press into the tree a little bit here. So notice how I nudge into the tree. That's what you're looking for, right? It's a little complicated. That's really advanced. That's, that's for people that are like more late game. But I figured I'd show that. That's the timing. Now if you're trying to do this buffered, which I recommend for new people, you pull chew. Pause. Out of unpause, hold R and let the chew drop for one frame. Okay, so it looks like that. You're still holding Z and R, right? You see that? Now, out of unpause, you want to continue to hold these, but hit bottle and then pause again. Right? And that's what you get there uh, until you get to the crooked arm frame. Now continue to hold ZNR and press B on a bun pause. And there's your RBA buffered. Okay, I'll go over that one more time. Z, pull chew, pause, hold Z and R. One frame. So it looks like that. Out of unpause, continue to hold Z and R, hit bottle, and then pause again. Okay, we're still holding Z and R. And then you want to buffer until you get the crooked arm frame. It's very distinct. Boom, there it is. You can tell because it's just like way different than the others. Hit B and there's your RBA. Uh, now this is a two frame trick. I showed you the crooked arm frame. It's a little harder to tell, but the frame before crooked arm also works. So you can do that too if you get a little bit better. drop it okay so that's not that frame that one right there is the frame right before crooked arm that will work as well and there's your rba you know this worked if you have bugs in bottle on b and what this does is since your bottle is empty on c right it always points to your c right by the way uh, that means it's bottle slot 3, which means you get an extra bottle with bugs in slot 3. That's the most simple way I can put that. Uh, after your RBA, you want to go over and collect egg from Malon. And get ready for Seamwalk. You'll have to go through uh, a couple text boxes with her. Uh, so if you notice, when I'm mashing A and B, I'm still holding Z. 
That's because it does an auto-target on Malin. So once you're done with this text box, it auto-targets her, and you can just continue to tap A. And I believe there's no collection delay, so you can just mash like a wild man. It should be fine. Yeah, you're good. So that's the egg. And now you want to stop mashing B, because like, say you're mashing B, you can do that. You lose a shit ton of time. You lose your bugs. Uh, it's an easy fix, though. You would just re-pick up and continue in that situation. And it would put your bugs back. Alright, uh, so next we got Seamwalk. Um, this is going to be the quickest way to get past the guards to Talon. Uh, and if you do this right, you should be getting to Talon right as the egg hatches. Ideally, it's, you know, optimal and everything's perfect, right? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, you get the egg, you start by climbing up the middle vines. Uh, these vines are kind of scuffed. You want to get directly in the middle if you can, because if you're, like, slightly offset, he might start to climb and then go into dummy mode. This is what I call dummy mode, where he climbs, but then he keeps falling. Uh, so try to get in the direct center. Uh, I'll show you the optimal way to do this, and I will show you a different way to do it, backup, etc. Uh, so optimally, you want to climb up, hold target. Continuing to hold target, seven rolls. Four, five, six, seven. Now from here, you want to hold forward, do two dry rolls into this corner, and then two side hops left. So one, two, one, two, right? I'll show you that again. One, two, one, two. You would then pause on this frame, holding target still. You hold, you're holding target, you pause. Do your equips, egg C right. And then Kokiri sword. Now out of unpause, release target, hold up and tap A. You'll get a left, uh, like a left angled roll. Looks like this. Uh, when Link's about to land, you would then retarget and roll six times. So retarget here. Two, three, four, five, six. Now if I did this right, it should be a perfect angle for the seam walk. Uh, you want to hold like, I think it's like 40 on the joystick. Yeah, around 40. Uh, so it's a, it's a slow walk and you can get up there. But I'll show you that again. One, two, one, two. This is not frame perfect, this pause. Hold up, A, retarget, two, three, four, five, six, stop, about 40, and you can get up the seam. This skips the guards. Uh, this is not necessarily required, it's just much faster. Um, so if you hate that setup, what you can do as a backup, do your equips, target this wall, backflip. ESS left, then you want to quick draw, do two slashes shielded, make sure you shield, it's very important, it maintains position, and that will give you the angle for the seam walk there. Okay, and uh, if you hate both of those, uh, I suppose you can just go this way, like this. And then you would just back walk and do this like a semi-casual way. Uh, I haven't done this in God knows how long. You can climb up this, by the way. And I would recommend just like jumping in the moat. Right. And that would be your pathing. Uh, but I'll, I'll go along with this one anyway. Boom. Boom. Okay. You want about a 40 range on your joystick. And then this is optimal movement for the rolling. You want to line up around here. And you can back walk all the way to Talon. You show him the chicken to wake him up. And make this is very important. Make sure you talk to him because this unlocks Lon Lon Ranch and other things that you're gonna need later in the run. 
It's very important you talk to him. I've seen runners wake him up and not talk to him. It's a disaster. Make sure you talk to him when he runs. Okay. All right, uh, so now I'm gonna go over a couple of things. Um, I'm gonna go over damage boost. Uh, actually, one thing I missed. Pull boxes. Or I'll just do boxes, backup. <clears throat> and also mega backup. Um, <clears throat> so there's a couple things you can do. I'll show the optimal way first. Um, this method is, is really dumb. I don't recommend this to anyone. But what you can do is do an unbuffered shield drop damage boost. Just like that. Uh, basically, you just pull Chu. Um, when Link is like in the air like this, you then hit that and then B one frame after. Uh, you can do that unbuffered. It saves a shit ton of time. I just it's it's incredibly risky. I really don't recommend it, but it's an option if you want to go for it. Uh, I'll show what that looks like buffered. This is what I do personally. Um, so you want to do this, hold up and run off the ledge. This is a two frame trick now. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, one frame after this. Okay, this is the first working frame. Um, if you get this frame or that frame, both of them work. Uh, after either one of those frames, you would then do the drop by holding R and then you can release everything on this frame and simply hit B and that gets you up okay so not this frame this is frame one drop it B okay same deal that's frame one that works but this is also frame two after boom that's what frame two looks like recognize those frames it's gonna save your butt uh, there's a bufferless method that a lot of runners prefer. Basically, you'll you'll stand on the edge here and wait for the seventh red flash, and then start running forward and mash B. That's the concept there. I don't like this strat personally, but a lot of people like it, so it's a matter of preference. I'll try to show it one more time. So stand against the edge, pull two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. You hold up, you just mash B on the seventh red flash. That's the idea behind that. Um, and we'll do a couple of backups. Say, oh, say uh, you screwed up your health or you're low on shoes. Damage boost is gonna kill you. You don't want to do that. Backup is you can pull boxes. This is very slow. It loses approximately 15 to 20 seconds. I don't remember the exact amount, but it is slow as shit. <clears throat> you can pull this box to this point where the back is even. Climb up and do a jump slash. That'll make you to the crawl space right there. Okay. Another option too. Say you're low on health. Uh, what you can do is climb up the box right here. Okay. One ESS turn. And you can do a Mega Flip. Uh, two ways to do a Mega Flip. Uh, you can do it unbuffered. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I recommend just learning that. Uh, you can do a buffered as well. I'll show you the buffered. Three, four, five, six, seven on the seventh dark flash. So this is the seventh red flash and we're gonna buffer to the dark one. All right, that's the, the darkest seventh, right? That's where you start, that's frame one that works. And also the one right after, which is the eighth red flash, that works as well. So if you get there, right, we're on the dark one. What you want to do is hold R, target, right, target and R, and then hit A out of unpause. 
and you want to buffer until the lean back frame. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Not that. Boom. Link's leaning back pretty hard, right? You see that? That's the frame where you'll then backflip. That's a, that's a buffered mega flip. It only works with the seventh dark and the eighth red. And it has to be that lean back frame that you see right there. Okay? That's what it looks like. Those are the only two frames that work. Um, those are the backups. Once you get that, you're ready for guards. Alright, guards, my favorite part. Anyone who watches my runs knows this is absolutely my favorite part of the run. I definitely never get caught. Uh, <laughs> so, a lot of this is RNG based in the sense of where the guards are looking and what position they're in. It is, however, up to the player whether or not they get caught in the sense of if you do frame perfect side ops, they cannot catch you. Unless it's a transition screen, but. I'm not even gonna bother with that, to be honest, because it's it's too complicated to get into. But TLDR, if you can do frame-perfect side hops and YOLO this the whole way, in theory, you should never get caught. So I'm gonna try to go over the YOLO way, and then I'm gonna try to go over the safest possible method, okay? So when you first enter here, you wanna hold straight down until Link's about, like, right here. And then you'll target and start hitting side hop. Okay? So target. And that's straight left. Uh, now, once you hit the first transition, you're going to go to up left on the joystick and continue to frame perfect side hop. This is the optimal method. Alright, that was really good RNG. So, if you can frame perfect side hop that entire way, you should never get caught in theory. Uh, minus like some crap that happens with screen transitions, but yeah, like basically that's what you're going for. And then the very last one, uh, what you want to do is actually target around here. And, uh, oh, excuse me, try to get those frame perfect side hops again. He got, he got caught. I made a mistake. That's the idea anyway. Um, with the YOLO guards, right? And on the last one, you can just side hop. Switch to up left. And when you get here, you hold up, down, back walk. When you hit the stairs, talk to Zelda. So that's what you want to do if you're YOLOing that shit. <clears throat> if you want to play it completely safe, a similar idea. You hold down. Start side hopping. This first guy, you want him to be looking to the right before you start side hopping again. So you want to actually just wait around here. Okay, you look to the right. Same with this guy. Oh, he's looking to the left. So you would back off a little bit, wait for him to look right. Oh. Okay, there it is. Nice and safe. This is a free pass. And once again, you want this guy to be looking to the right if you're trying to play it safe. Almost caught me there once again. Uh, now right here, you have two choices. You can either take the left route if the guard is all the way up there. Or, say the, the guard's not there and you're trying to go right. What you can do is wait here. Wait for this guy to get here. And then you can just simply side hop like that. Uh, in this particular cycle, it's best to just go left, though. Nice and safe, easy. But yeah, once again, if that top guard was not there, you would wait for the bottom guard to get all the way to the right from this position, and then just start back walking like this. He cannot see you if you're around here, and he's all the way down. That's basically the concept with guards being safe. Same deal. Hold up, back walk. You should have a half a heart, ideally, and five bomb shoes at this point, or six. Talk to Zelda. 
All right, so Zelda's going to talk your ear off for like, I don't know, three minutes or something ridiculous. There's nothing you can do. You just have to listen to her. Uh, once she's done talking, she gives you a letter. And this will set you up for Zelda's lullaby cutscene skip. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to do it the best way possible. I'm going to show you what happens, what you can do as a backup, and just run through some options. I guess. Well, there's basically only two options. But once you have the letter, uh, you want to go into this corner, target this wall right here. It'll then be six side hops. The target one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you know you're in a good position when it's like in between these two pieces of grass. Let's show that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, if you're not comfortable with side hops, if you're like newer, you can hold shield. And it actually delays the side hop by one frame, so that, like, you know, you're not, like, taking steps. Because if you take, like, steps and stuff, it can just screw it up, but... You can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you can then either ESS right, or... Flick turn, whatever you're more comfortable with. I screwed up. Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is the sex, right? Uh, so when you turn right, you're going to want to backflip, pull a chew, and then shield one frame after. And that will give you death, as well as putting you into the cutscene simultaneously. I'll show that again. So you backflip, pull chew, and then hit shield one frame after you pull the chew midair. It's pretty lenient. Uh, one thing you want to make sure, don't take a step. Don't take a step before doing the backflip. This has to be a perfect backflip. Uh, I guess you could hold shield, release, and then do that, but it's risky, so just get good. You'll get it. It's not a problem. Say you fuck up, and you die, and you don't get the cutscene. Oh shit, what the hell. Uh, there's two options. Um... You can either just talk to Impa, deal with the cutscene. That's one option. This wastes about a minute and a half. Or you can try to do the cutscene again, the cutscene skip again, by damage buffering off a of Zelda. So to do that, you would shield drop a chew and then pull letter. Like this. You hit A and continually pull letter. Like this. Okay, and once you have a full heart, that'll be your final buffer and you can try again. That's the backup. Okay, and afterward... Let's see. Target, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the ideal way of doing it. Uh, so for newer people, I recommend just mashing start and A. Just saving. Uh, if you're trying to be more optimal for more advanced players, uh, you can hold right. Do no save continue. Hold right A, and then hold left A. Uh, this is very risky if you're not used to the game, because you could potentially do this, which is like... It brings you back to the menu. It The run's dead if you do that. So if you're new, mash start and A. Just like that. Uh, if you're advanced, hold right. And then hold right A, left A. Saves a couple frames. Um, but either way, whichever you want to do, uh, you'll be spawned back here. You will have ZL in your inventory. Pog. Nailed it. Um, three rolls. Two, three. Talk to Empa. And you get an escort back to outside castle. You want to do a slight... I guess it's like slightly up from up left. To get a good angle. To get a back walk. Or you can just simply roll. 
either way does work. Um, it's just a matter of, once again, preference, how fast you're trying to go, right? And the movement to Temple of Time, one, two, three, four, five rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's your movement through market to Temple of Time. All right, um, so this is the last part of Child One. Uh, if you've made it this far, good job. This bottom of the well and RBA and all that is not easy at all. So that's super cool. Um, but we're gonna move on, do dot skip. If you don't know how to do this, I'll go over it real quick. Uh, if you need much more detail, I recommend either asking in Discord or finding a like an advanced full detail tutorial. I'm gonna just go into it real quick. Uh, and I'm only gonna show you the standard dot skip from initial position. I'm not gonna show you backups or lunge storage or any of that. You have to look for that on your own. Uh, so when you enter Temple of Time, you want to hold up and then turn around, side hop right. This will be the position you're looking for. Once you get here, you want to do a backflip, down roll, and hold down for a couple of frames. Okay, so it looks like this. Backflip, down roll, release target, and hold down. Okay, and then you want to shield turn or flick turn left. Uh, I personally just like to flick, just like that, that's the angle. Uh, now you want to do ESS down into full down. And this will give you a weird position that actually clips through the door. This is what it looks like, that's what it looks like uh, when you're not near the door. You want to do this motion. So if you're ever practicing dot skip, you can't do that weird side roll if it looks like this you're doing it right oh if it looks like that it's not right but it, ne it needs to be like a tighter backflip like that uh so we do that okay now i recommend doing this buffered to newer people um you can make it a two frame trick if you do buffer it uh in order to make it a two frame trick you have to hold left right after the side roll so, side roll. And I'm holding left, you see that? I buffer to this frame. This is fra working frame one. You would hold left and jump slash. Four side hops. Now, if you're late, you'll hear Link gasp, and that's how you know you got the late frame. As long as you were holding left during the buffer, you can actually switch to up and jump slash. And do your side hops. So I'll show that again. Okay, I pop back out. For the example, I'll get the setup again. Holding left. Working frame number one, he gasps. Working frame number two, instead of holding left, you hold up. And then your side hops, okay? Working frame number one, hold left. That's working frame number one. Come on. That's working frame number two. Hold up. Once this cutscene plays, you pull the Master Sword, and then it's on to adult one. <laughs>